That is the photograph we're going to be using in the, in the lesson. And I want to break this up into shapes, overlapping shapes, that kind of create depth in the landscape. Um, as well as think about pushing the values a little more uh, to make these shapes look more, more three-dimensional. So when I talk about shapes, overlapping shapes, there's it's about eight or nine here I want to consider. It also helps you to simplify the composition. One is this hill here. It comes in front. And I might want to change it to where it slants down um, and maybe have another one come up like that. I can break it up a little bit more um, or maybe not. This still, you know, I would probably cut it down a little bit, a little bit more of a slope. But that's one shape. That's in the foreground. Uh, then here, this shape of these three or four or five trees clumped together. That's another one, uh, another one here, and a shape here. And I can alter these shapes a little bit, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I have one back in here. And then this one right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including the flat field here. And then the mountains, which I can break up into two or three shapes here as well. There's one there, one there, and one there. And instead of just one shape for the distant mountains, uh, three gives me where I can put one in front of another. It creates depth. And in a landscape where we're trying to show depth, but all we have is a flat two-dimensional canvas, we have to do a lot of overlapping. Um, now I might want to consider a few things. I'm going to change color here. Uh, some of these shapes I might want this tree here to enlarge so it cuts this line right here. That way it really comes in front before um, well, where am I there? Before it 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 doesn't overlap completely this shape back in here, but the minute I Again, I lift it up, then it really comes in front. I might uh, want to change the shapes on these a little bit just to get it more interesting rather than just a round shape. Uh, same thing in here. These are, these are aspens down in here. I might want to uh, lift one up you know, so it's a little taller. Uh, then maybe have another one in front here. Show a few more trunks, the white aspen trunks, and this is in uh, northern Wyoming. Uh, they really have a lot of punch to them when you show those white aspens against a darker green or, or whatever color the leaves happen to be. Um, and then same thing in here in the, in the foreground on the field. I, I don't want to make things up, but I can take the shapes that I have and um, create a little more interest. So the shrubbery down here, I can create a bigger shape. Uh, this is also kind of a marshy area, so if I wanted to get some water in here as well, just to break it up. I'm looking for things that are just going to create a little bit more interest. Uh, and Photoshop's a good way to do it, now, since we're talking about uh, Photoshop here. Um, it's not a necessary thing, but it does help a little bit. <clears throat> I can also do this on with pencil and paper, uh, which I really like to do it more on that because it keeps me in, in drawing more. Um, but these are the changes I want to make. And then value-wise, um, I want to keep these trees, I'm going to go back to the original here, uh, keep these trees more solid than they look. In other words, I know the light is coming from the left and hitting the sides and tops of the trees, uh, but it looks a little um, unsolid. In other words, you can't really tell too much where the darks stop and where the darks and the lights begin, so I want to when I paint it, especially when I block it in, I want to get these shapes 
and find a definite solid mass for light and dark. Same thing in here. The minute I do that, then that becomes stronger shape. It becomes more solid. Uh, the rocks or the trees can look a little bit like rocks, but I can come back and soften the edges in a few places. But this will improve how solid these things look uh, as I get these trees, especially in the foreground and middle ground, a definite dark and light. Let's get a really separate those darks and lights a little bit more. So these trees look really three-dimensional, definite shadow um, and, and light side. Not so mushy with the edge between them. Keep those edges a little bit more solid. Now color-wise, I get a lot more color in both the dark and the light. Uh, but I want to keep it more solid like that. So I'm using shapes, overlapping, uh, maybe making some of the shapes a little bigger, a little smaller, um, and really solidifying the dark pattern, especially in the groups of trees, to make it look uh, more, more three-dimensional. <laughs> 